Hey there friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarah and today we're going to talk about kind of an interesting topic. As with most conversations and most Sarah thoughts, this one starts with my trainer, whom I respect and admire so freaking much. We had a really long conversation um, a couple of days ago, and one thing we had talked a lot about were the boundaries that I've been needing to set up lately, and the way that people have been coming across in my life, and how they're just not like as, as happy and supportive as they had been, and I'm seeing more and more of that. And me being the naive person I tend to be sometimes, I tend to see a lot of people for like who they really are, and I tend to see people as just being really good, genuine people, because I can see from a lot of people's perspectives. Obviously I can't, I'm not in their perspective, because I'm not them, I'm me. But I know that pretty much, I know most people are good people, and they have good intentions. Um, so sometimes it's a little hard for me to discern when I am being taken advantage of or being put down because I can just view their perspective and their thoughts and then I tend to put their thoughts and perspectives in front of mine. And as someone who works with horses, who really just wants to see humanity thrive and to see people come together as a community, um, I was talking to her about how I see specific things like all over in the horse community and how I feel like I should say something if there's a problem or offer something or, you know, pretty much go above and beyond to help. And she had told me pretty much 99% of people don't want your help. They think they are correct. They think they have the right answer and they think that their way is the only way. And I was like, huh. I forgot about that perspective because when people talk to me I tend to hear what they have to say and I take what could possibly apply and if it doesn't apply they will say thank you all I honor that but like you know I'm good um, but I'm one of those if I see something wrong I'll say something and especially horses being a, kind of a, a profession of mine at the moment making sure that I catch everything every little detail and horses that I'm working if they're sick if they're this if they're that anything I could do to make the horses lives more comfortable um, also sometimes not really on me. There's a saying that we used to say at my old barn, not my monkey, not my circus, because the way that some people do things with their horses, it's not my responsibility and not mine to take on. How many times have you done that in like your own life with your own situations where you've taken on something that's not yours because you thought it was your responsibility and because you thought it was your, your service or your duty to, to help? My trainer kind of pokes fun at me because she had offered, she calls them breadcrumbs. She would drop like these little breadcrumbs and she'd leave the door open, just, just a jar, enough that I would be enticed. And she worked with me a long time ago. And then stuff happened and I was working with this other trainer and I was so like, you know, young minded and all over the place that I didn't, I, w I wasn't as aware of her value as I am now. She's literally gold. She's worth more than gold whatever the most precious metal is out there, the most precious anything, that is her, her wisdom and her insight. I keep telling her she needs to write a book. Like, how you see me appear, you can thank her because she has helped to mold me into this incredible person. And because I want to be like her so badly, everything she says to me, I like absorb like a sponge because she's just so wise. <laughs> anyway, I digress. She had left the door open and I didn't, I took the breadcrumbs up to a certain spot and then one day, I was having an upset because my horse was doing something that I didn't want her to do and she wasn't listening to me. And she had told me to make these suggestions, and I did. And I kept that in mind when I, you know, I had a show the next day. And I kept it in mind when I did the show, and I wound up getting first place and second place in my classes. Those are my first, first and second places with Abigail because I've never shown her before. And it was amazing. And I knew from then on out that, like... I needed to work with her because it just everything she said clicked and literally from our first lesson the exchange was just unreal but she left the door open and then eventually I just came barging in and I'm just like all right show me your loaves of bread <laughs> the same thing can be done with people so I guess you can say like this is implementing boundaries 
I'm not giving everything of myself to you because I don't want you to take all of my bread. I only have a specific amount of bread to give to you. However, I will give you little pieces of bread until finally you can come in, see what the bread's all about, and then you can make your own bakery. It's the whole point of this, right? We all have our own little bakery shops and everything, and then, you know, we entice other people to come in, try our bread, mix this type of bread. Um, <clears throat> You can offer little bits of information to people, and if they take it, great. If they don't take it, thank you very much. Some doors are meant to be closed. Some of them are meant to be like, you know, kind of left open. You could treat it like a book on the bookshelf. Some books you just throw them out altogether. You donate them. You can close them with a bookmark and put them back on the shelf. You can leave them open because you know that you're going to come back to them, or they can be pretty and they can be coffee table books. <laughs> Make that like your boundary. Don't give yourself away. Don't give your entire loaf breadcrumbs. If somebody picks up that breadcrumb, crumb, offer a little bit more. Offer a little more. Offer a little more. And then eventually, if there's a really good exchange, carry on with that. See where that goes. But don't think, like I used to think, that you have to keep forcing your loaves of bread to people because some people might not take it. Some people might take the entire thing and then just like take your whole bakery hostage. That's happened to me quite a bit too. But another thing that I think I was talking to my mom about this as well, as someone who wants to help the collective thrive, if I have friends come to me saying that they have these projects that they're doing and they're successful, they're successful in their meditations, they're successful in their jobs, I get so excited for them. I'm so happy for them. You know, people who are getting married, who are having kids, who are living these great lives, we now tend to be conditioned to be like, oh my god, look at you, like, you got married, you got kids, oh, you got that perfect life, blah, 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 look at me over here, I'm miserable. And then we tend to resent these people, and then jealousy tends to creep in. A lot of times when people put stuff on, like, Facebook or Instagram, it tends to be the best of things, and then a lot of people shut down, and they become jealous. And then we tend to not want other people to succeed. We don't like it when other people do well. We thrive on people not doing as well because then it makes us feel better. I remember listening to, I think it's called Untitled. It's a podcast that Adam Savage um, is on, was on. It was his podcast. And I remember him talking about when he would have an idea or some kind of method of doing something, he would always share it. Adam Savage is probably my biggest hero. His book, Every Tool's a Hammer, is one of my favorite books. He, Adam Savage, is amazing. I love the way he thinks. But he said that he always shared his secrets and his techniques. And I think it was Norm was the guy that he was talking with on the show, and they were like, no, why would you do that? What if they steal your technique and they make a bunch of money off of something that you did? And he said, no, because someone can take that technique and what if they could make it better? They can make it more productive, they can get more done, they can find other ways of doing it that he never would have thought of. And that stuck with me. I haven't listened to that episode, and I don't even know what episode it is, and it's been over like seven, six years since I've heard that episode, and it's stuck with me. And I think about that. I think about, you know, giving up my time whenever I'm able to, to be able to help somebody share things from my perspective, being able to do this YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't have a job because I'm doing this right now because I believe in this, you know. Being able to give and being able to exchange information will then lead to more exchanging of information and you don't know what could happen, whose life you could change and then them come back and then change your life. If you are someone who tends to get resentful when you see other people having good things happen to them, take a step back and think about that energy. Because again, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And you've got, if you have that negative, jealous energy, you are attracting more of it because you're saying to the universe and the energetic consciousness, I don't have this, I'm lacking this. And because you are in that vibrational state, you are going to get more lack. And you're going to see more people getting married and finding partners. And you're just going to get angrier and angrier. Or you're going to be filled with more lack. You know, surrender. Relax. It's all good, man. Just chill. <laughs> if you want a partner, and then all of a sudden you see a bunch of people getting married, you should be excited about that. 
if you think, I had this happen to me around my birthday. I had so many birthday synchronicities, so many numbers, so many people saying things about birthday, 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 because that was in my vibrational escrow, as Abraham Hicks would say, because my birthday was coming up. Everything was birthday. And then normally I wouldn't pay attention to it, E squared. I know they talk about that too. Um, relationships and dating sometimes tends to get on my mind as well. And then I hear about, oh, so-and-so went on a date, so-and-so is getting married, so-and-so this and that. And it's not like you should, it's not the universe being like, you can't have this. It's the universe saying to you, you're thinking about it. Therefore, we're putting it into your alignment so you can keep thinking about it so that then you can eventually get it. Be happy. If somebody is getting married or is in a, an amazing relationship, think to yourself, oh my God, I'm next. If that hot mess can get into a relationship, oh, I sure shit can get into a really healthy relationship too. Like, think like that. If they can do it, I can do it. If I can do it, you most certainly can do it. If there's anybody out there who could do it, it's you. Change your mindset. If Joe Schmo over there is able to come up with some multi-million dollar idea, you know, on a whim, oh my god, you could do it too. There's nothing we can't do. We put our minds to it, we change our energy, we come from a different place in a different spot. You're good. You got this. You got this, friend. Oh my goodness. It is so hot in here. This is like my third video and these lights, they're not, they're, they're, it's pretty hot. Um, this storm needs to come through. Anyway, if this was helpful and you wish to give back, ko-fi.com slash heytherfriend. Every single donation is greatly appreciated. You have no idea from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. Share this video. Share any of my videos. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers. We're already getting halfway through the watch hours. I'm so excited. Um, it's also greatly appreciated. My community is awesome and I wish to help this grow so we can keep having more conversations, friend. It's It's been a journey. We have a ways to go, but hey, I'm here for it, right? And no matter what, friend, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend? <laughs>